months is in a row? Is it going to take? Uh, probably like eight. Eight? Okay. Yeah, I think we're halfway there. Oh, okay. We're halfway through the true techies arc. <laughs> We have not even begun to see his full power. I mean, I'm just saying just for this tournament, you know, they, they're like, all right, guys, we'll figure out that techies another time and then they're going to do it again. Obviously, there are a lot of heroes in this uh, in this game. Damage. Techies just one of them. Is not going to die here. The battery is all doing a lot. That is free trade, though. For OG going in this lane, which means BZM he used a decent amount of mana, but he was probably going to use it anyway. The downside is he didn't get the CS off the arc bounces, but you're in a pretty damn good position to just bully nine in this early phase of this lane and abuse that Ricky regen as much as you can before it just pumps him straight back up. So yeah, actually, maybe that wasn't too good. Yeah, this hero, like the way he would pressure him is now with right clicks, but it's really hard to actually kick Ricky out because he has so much starting armor with physical damage now. He's getting kicked out and he's down to 80 HP. He's him out of mana. He does have the bottle coming in. He went for the uh, three band branches build so he can get the bottle off of the very first wave. All right, I have a question for you. Yeah. Austin, capitalist Walsh. Uh-huh. Just DDoS you on live tell. Oh my God. Who takes an objective for this OG lineup? Um, that would be the Meteor Hammer Dark Seer. Oh. Well, he's not going Meteor Hammer. Oh, try. No. <laughs> I'll give you another guess. <laughs> the Meteor Hammer Clockwork. Is, is every answer that's just Meteor Hammer? On yes, so I'm going to cycle well, through every single one of the heroes. Because they have no objective taker, <laughs> so I'm a little worried. I feel like when you're playing with no objective taker versus Tundra, which is the team with the longest average game length. That sounds like a bad rest. Yeah, yeah. They're basically saying we're never going to get a Roshan in this game. At some point, Tundra will get it. They have Beast Rage King. At some point, Tundra's going to get your towers. And I'm worried that OG, without the ability to take towers off the ability, can test Rosh. And Tundra's playing at their disciplined pace. They're just going to outmatch you, and eventually that Rosh is going to kick in. And the team fights are going to become hard because you're also playing with a Doom lineup centered around some burst magic damage. One, if Pipe comes out early for 3 which I expect it to this game after maybe Helm of the Overlord, or even if you can get Pipe on Enchanters, I feel like so much of OG's damage goes out the window. This is a magic damage only lineup. So you're struggling through that. You're probably going to give up Roshans, which means then you have to play Doom Zeus into an Aegis carrier, which is likely going to not be Wraith King because he already has a built-in Aegis. At this point, you should really That's going to be a tough position to be in if you're OG. Normally, I'd say the way around all these things is you just destroy the lane so hard that there is no Dota to be played. Uh, Normally, but not here. Why not? I don't know if you can destroy these lanes. I think you can do pretty well if you're OG. Yeah. I, feel a I just don't see them destroying, especially versus Tundra, who are really good at getting out of lanes. But they're off to a decent start. I'll give them that much. If Darkseer can start stumbling off the clockwork, you get these interactions away from the Enchantress who can purge off the shell and debilitate that combo. Might have a good shot of running some of these cores over in that mid game before the objective taking can come online for a Tundra. That's what I would look to do here from OG. Get a fast start and just roll it into mid game off chain chain core kills with the Zeus ult giving you the backup for a lot of these goes. This cannot be a slow passive game from OG. I think you just lose out on the map too much. Especially with techies, man. This hero does not do well from a behind position. Almost dies there, Aramis, who has been doing very well for Tundra, it must be said. Great standing. Great standing. Battling. This is another game where his role is really important. Because I feel as though the Snapfire is a lot of Tundra's early damage in the engagements. So they want Snapfire to be high level here. They wanted to have a really good game. His kisses are going to be the largest damage follow-up in the fights off the Beast stun, off the Dark, off the Raid King stun. These are three melee cores who can go in and set the fight up for the backline supports to Tundra. That's pretty important that Aramis has a good game and just itemizes for damage, in my opinion. Let the other heroes take care of the ores in the team fight. Make sure your Snap is happy. I mean, hell, the way you're, you're kind of talking about it, it'd be nice to see if Snake King could actually scale up a bit, too. In a way, yeah. That's what I'm debating who gets pipe on this Tundra lineup. First right. Blood. Hey, first blood mm, goes the way of the techies. And immediately goes to pressure 33 as well. So you said they needed to be able to win lanes, and they are definitely doing that in CS. And now they've gotten a, the first kill of the game, too. 
And that's a 0 to 1 build for Yoragi to make sure you get that kill and you're winning the early trades with this Doom. No Devour points. Now maybe you're saying this isn't paying off, but you get first blood, you get some extra kills. And of attack. course, if 33 never summons a creep on this lane, there's no board to eat. Yeah, I was going to say, like isn't this kind of like you just don't level Devour until he levels Boar? I mean, you always eat a small creep that sometimes just wins you lane, depending on where the camps are, but he probably knew these camps were all blocked. He doesn't actually have good spawns in this big jungle anyway. Oh, there's a Harpy Stormcrafter, though. Oh, now it spawns. Now he's keep the two. Devour. Yeah, he's level four. He's going to run over. Scout it out. This is a big creep for him to get. A lot of extra damage coming into this techies lane. There if he levels it, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you want to brawl it. So this is the brawl coming online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tastes pretty good. What do you think it tastes like? Chicken. You think all the neutral creeps taste like chicken? <laughs> This is a Jenkins question, man. Why are you asking me this? I played a TI. I don't have to answer these dumb questions. <laughs> no, you do, though. <laughs> no, I don't. Jump in. Blast off. Lands on two. They're going to go for the kill on Aramis. There's and they'll the get harpy. it again. What's that lightning taste like, Aramis? Tastes like uh, another death, apparently. Oh, the Thunder God's Wrath coming into play to get a second kill for OG. I mean, they... They're cooking. Oh, hey, 33. Gonna take a little bit more damage. Cooking, drop. cooking with lightning. Grease lightning. Regeneration. Grease lightning. You know, BCM's room is so dark that when he bolts with Zeus, it actually lights up his room. <laughs> <laughs> It's great. It's like a four, it's like a fourth dimension, you know, third dimension coming out of the screen. Yeah, like those 4D movies. <laughs> he's really in the zone right now. Radiance Middle Tower is under I am the god of lightning. I think he's just saying that to himself. I'm feeling I think he yells zap whenever he bolts somebody. Thunder. <laughs> I love these player games. I've said it before, but I, I think they're the best addition Dying to Pro Dota. Are fortified. Since. Look out! Square bread. Oh, he got him! Out with a hammer. Can he actually kill him? Oh, he hops away, and I don't think Nine had vision up the high ground. Yeah, but Shu has vision of 33 up here. Another kill going this Doom Techies lane way. Uh, they're having a nice early game in terms of the kills for OG. This is what this lineup wants to do: slay, slay, slay every day, all day. Yeah, I mean, you said they have no objective taking, so I guess in a way you could say all they do is slay. Dyer's middle tower Pretty much. Is under attack. I mean, if you can't kill objectives, then you better be killing heroes. They're going to need to kill a lot of heroes to win this game. And they do have some really nice synergy, right? They've got uh, three different frontliners for two different big backline, you know, kind of glass cannon style heroes. They've got vacuum plus blast off. They've got ion shell plus clockwork and uh, and doom. The well, lineup makes sense together. It's just an unconventional draft. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it can't win. doesn't mean they can't make some magic happen. It's just tough. It is tough to win these games because you have to just keep, keep killing. You have to keep finding space on the map, keep scaling with your cores, which sometimes these big aura items come out and it cuts off a lot of your team fight potential, even in an even game. Those are the things I'm worried about, but if you can keep finding the openings, then I do like those little synergies. And I also like the fact that Chu is actually having a game on techies. Round, round of applause. He's going to get to six <laughs> before 10 minutes. Yeah, that did not happen Very nice. in the previous, previous three matches, I believe. This is why the kills on lane are so important for this hero. You yeah. cannot fall behind in levels. All of your spells are just damage ramp. So if you're behind, that ramp is just terrible. Whereas if you're ahead, get more ahead. <laughs> he just drops off the skeletons. Like, okay, kids, have fun. Wolf are buffing him up, too. Oh, denied. See you later. Oh, and BCM missed his lightning bolt too. DM is actually a little bit low. He's gonna die. These skeletons are doing some work on him. <laughs> he has Vanguard too. Uh, oh, nine with the hammer. He's not gonna try and use the hammer. He's just gonna try and go for the kill with the Ray Fire Blast. They should get him here. And maybe Tiger too. Elder Blink Strike. Very, very good. BZM does get him though. Lightning Bolt, Thunder God's Wrath. Gets the vision. Gets the damage. Top lane though. The explosion's going out. Chu gets Aramis as well. Double kill for Chu. All faith in Techies restored for OG, I think. They are feeling it this game. He has done work. 4 0 and 1. Early Arcane Boots. We're going to get to see what the Techies can really do this time around. You were doubting him. I was.
and yet you have been smited. Radiance top tower is under attack. Or smoke. I'll take either one. Armlet is done for the Wraith King. But he is going to be found here. Skeeter does have an ult point to commit. Yeah, I, mean, I think he might do it just because Aramis is here. They're trying to turn. And what are they going to do here? He's going to go for the cookie onto the Zeus. They could have cookie out, but they go for the kill instead. And it was almost enough. So close, in fact. But not quite good enough. And Aramis will die as a result. At least he's got his Wraith King out, though. Yeah, if they could have got that Zeus kill, would have been huge. Look at nine. He's trying to cut him off. Oh, he's cut him off at the pass. Easy him nose. He scanned him. The thousand IQ oh, plays. He him. Ooh, he couldn't get in range. TP out. Oh, we got him anyway. Nine. The mind games between these two mid laners. Incredible. No, he got his courier. Why oh, why courier? He did not get nine. Oh, Never mind. The, the mind games were too much for you, Cap. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a thing pop up. I thought he died. <laughs> what was, Only one where was the courier even? Caster mind games. Where was the courier? He flew it over. Uh, Maybe that was the mind game. He used the courier to take the Ricky hit. Damn. There's the next level. I don't think he would have died anyway, but that was pretty cool. Yeah, I was surprised at how quickly he uh, got bursted down. Let's see how close this is. Dyer's he gets it, so he gets the vision. Actually, it might have. Might have. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> is that just? The, that is. That might be one of the highest IQ plays I've ever seen in my life. No, I that was we, purposeful. I I don't know if it was purposeful. I don't think it was. Wait, we'll, we'll, we'll give it to him anyway. I mean, Darkseer does have a big brain. The true. Great fire blast needs to be their hammer. Very nice. That big brain. Didn't see that outcome. Unlucky. Can only predict so much. Unlucky or outplayed? Dyer's a combination of both. And look at the stack. Big, big ancient stack for Tundra going on here. Whew. All right, that's pretty much max capacity. You know, I was looking at stack. <laughs> Tundra are the number one team in terms of stacks. And they are. They are actually. That is a true stat. Yes. Unlike, uh, unlike the one I said earlier. <laughs> like the other, where I said, we may have mixed up our I teams. Confused. I said Tundra never level one smoke, and it was actually OG. Which yeah. is why that OG level one smoke worked, because Tundra weren't expecting it. Yeah. Because they never exactly. level one smoke. Dyer's and you know who called me out on it? AUI Tundra called me out on it. And now I'm Dyer's calling. <laughs> he actually messaged me after that game. He's like, what the, the hell is Where did I tell that that come from? This guy's smoking crack. But now I get to call a UI out on calling me out. So who really won? Let me tell I you think, something. I think uh, he did because you. Yeah, he did. You you caught. But you know what that means, ability. Cap? That means AUI oh, is listening to my cast and pay, actually paying attention. So. Or That's he's just attack. watching his team play Dota. Well, uh, all, I mean, that's a possibility, too. <laughs> and you can't let me win, man. Nice pickup, though, on nine, and they get a mid tower Radiance for it. Very good for OG. I mean, the early towers, they definitely can go down just purely off of kills. We'll see the progression. The progression you were talking about, right, is more so about like tier twos. How do you bridge high ground? How do you take Roshans? Yep. That's the big question. Uh, I wish OG bet they knew this ancient stack was going on right now. Yeah. This is a lot of gold going 33's way. Level nine and a half off that. Do we know who's going the pipe yet, by the way? Because Snake Kings are going drums. Nobody's going pipe yet. So My guess is it's going to be after Helm of the Overlord here. Yeah. If you're not looking to accelerate the objectives super fast because you don't feel like they're contested, then you can just slowly progress through these. DM. Get Indiana Jones out here. DM. Outrunning the boulders coming out. Keep in mind, this is pre-Ricky shard. Like, this is a mid-Ricky who's waiting for that minute 15 to get fully online with the hammer combo. So this is one of those skirmishes are a little bit easier for OG. That said, they've been doing pretty damn well at finding them, getting these early tier ones just off the Vanguard Darks here and the, the group up. Nice way to open up the map. They're gonna want all that space for the lineup to go to work and continue to scale through this Zeus Doom. Zeus can become an issue for Tundra's lineup. They do not have the best gap pools outside of a Ricky jump and sleep. 
but even then, you can often save the hero off that, right? The jump burst is not very high for Tundra. So if OG get those four staffs, so they get some save mechanics for Zeus, and they just play that range game, could create some annoying team fights for Tundra. That's where they have to use the vision. The Beast Hawks, the Ricky Scouting, set up the fight in a closed situation where they can get the follow-up as well. Really great read by uh, Yuragi there. The push coming in from the Beastmaster, there was a lot of Tundra heroes up in that area. They definitely were ready to commit for a kill, diving that tower, but uh, he TPs mid, collects some farm, and keeps himself at the top net worst spot. Look shot in, He's gonna find the Ricky again! Zap! See you later. Might even be able to get snaking as well. Yeah, nice double. The damage is severe right now, and that was pre Zeus shard. He just flew that in. So it's gonna start scaling and picking up here. The whole while that was happening, Yuragi was clearing their own triangle stacks, which Ion Shell and his Doom, helping him accelerate on the farm where he doesn't have that physical cleave. So he's already got BKB, and he's cruising to a pretty good position of his own. I do like how OG are playing this game. Like they are using their lineup to perfection here, just continuing to find the small skirmish fights and farm up on the heroes that want to get to those early power spikes in terms of the damage. The shard on Techie is really important. The shard on Zeus that we saw fly out, really important because it's all about the burst and the jump. When you get this hook shot in, you need to make sure that hero is dying off the limited chains that you have. It's really important. Dude, look at that flash. <laughs> and that was all thanks to uh, an observer ward planted pretty much on the outpost. Yep, I'm a big vision. fan of, the, of these wards right here. OG agree with you as they're making it work. We still haven't seen them. Tiger's going to find another one. Can he hit the hook shot, though? There's just a train of animals following 33. You have Both, to keep in uh, mind that Helm of the Overlord is coming soon. Yeah. Well, what, what joke were you going to make there? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there was there was some there was both his creeps as well as some heroes around. So, Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. I thought you were talking about the Reddit threads. Radiant are scared. Said a bunch of animals are following him around. <laughs> <laughs> Chat's not gonna like that joke. <laughs> hey, you, I might. <laughs> <laughs> And ultimately, what else is this cast for? Yeah, I mean, why'd they put me up here? They didn't want me to just dunk on everybody universally. I have nothing left to lose. <laughs> I'm already retired in disgrace. What more can you take away from me? It's true, you don't have much dignity left. Oh, nice done. Got him with the dust too, but they don't have the vision of him. They hit him with the dust, but they couldn't see him because of nighttime and the tower didn't stretch out that far. I think they weren't confident in sending Thunder God Rat that way because they don't have the stun follow up. So maybe you see him and he just TPs out and you wasted an ult. They really want to save it for these fights, especially since that fight is coming. Here is that early Roshan off Helm of the Overlord that they gave 33 all of those stacks for. Actually, they're debating it. Instead, just going to go for the top play. Try and bail out their Snapfire. Nope. Not going to get there in time, but maybe they can get there for the punish. DM searching out. He's good. No, he's not. Defusal, not in range. <laughs> Couldn't get him with the defusal and doesn't have that uh, smoke dart yet. This is a lot of time being wasted here. I guess he's gonna live. Nice. No sleeping dart up yet. Defusal rush for nine. They were just thinking about going in Roshan with the helm of the overload death of timing. Now they wasted a full minute and a half in this chase up top. Do you just go back in and still try and force it here if you're Tundra? I feel like you do when you, when you have all these auras up, you have the early Desolator on. Got Knight again. This time around, they see him. Silence up for a long time. They still have a vacuum, I believe. They'll use it to chain. And with the Ion Shell, shouldn't be enough. These are big kills. Like, they are really big. You're delaying Tundra's game flow here. And you're getting sucked into these skirmishes. Thirteen will get you on the backside. Baiting the roar. Who does he want to roar? Illusion Room. Pop the Illusion Room. The hook shot comes in, stalls him up, but he can't get off the roar. As a result, Snake King's going to be run down by the battery. Salt 2. More, more, more. They're going to go for Aramis. They should get him as well. One by one. Tundra get picked off until the only remaining hero is Skeeter. That Overlord Deso timing did nothing for them. Just didn't commit to the Roche, didn't get a solid fight going in the 5 on 5, and that's a big timing that did not hit like Tundra wanted it to. Doesn't mean they still can't use it here when they get back up, but 
Radiance Again, the more you get sucked into OG's game plan right now, which is just fight you in these open areas, keep skirmishing you, then get the lanes in. OG are happy to take those engagements. Ah, uh, he got the high ground ward. So they replanted a high ground ward to help them do Roche, Sean, but now that's gone. I, I think that kills the possibility of doing Roche. I think that vision is so important because they have to see whether or not uh, they get like vacuum hook shotted when they try and Roche, right? The question is, if you're not forcing the objectives here or with your timings on Tundra, are you happy playing the map? I think the pickoff game is pretty online for OG right now. With the hook shot coming through, blink on your Rocky with hoof stomp. Techies can follow up these guns. Yeah, they're looking. Cogs push back into your Rocky. He's going to go for the go keeps the other direction, but he's not going to make it in time. Thunder God's wrath just to make sure. And also spotted nine, who is chased away. Full out Bloodstone for our BZM Zeus. So he's going that tanky frontlining style Zeus, or at least not frontlining, but you know, definitely not easy to pop. I like Bloodstone Zeus' this game. This is actually a good Bloodstone, Bloodstone Zeus game because I don't know if Tundra are going to have the jump burst on him, but they still want to jump him. So if he gets jumped and a single four staff comes out, he gets leap off, he activates that and ults, he's back to full. And then that team fight looks a lot different for Tundra. I think this is going to help him scale as well in terms of the mana department. Oh, the mines. They let him know that the team's coming if they were paying attention. And I think Chu was. He's still going to be caught. Got out the disarm. Stalls it a couple of seconds. That's the, this is the smoke for Roshan. They're just going to commit to it. So the question is, do you try and contest this if you're OG You've with that ball. back around the pit? You might be able to, especially with the clockwork vision like you were talking about. You can smoke over there, get there quick. Yeah, they're going to try and contest. It's just already gone. Oh, no, they're not going to get there in time. Maybe they could have. They actually go in and get the Doom. The BKB, he didn't pop it. Now he gets it, but he's still stuck inside the clock. The nice people, they want a vacuum. That might doom. just save Yuraki. No, he dies in the end. 33 catches him with the big Thunderhide Lizard, but that vacuum did so much work. OG's got to reset a little bit, trying to back oh, out, trying to get the BTM out of here, but they hit him with the stun. Oh, no, Yuraki. He chooses to initiate Don't after the Roshan dies. But if you make that commitment, you got to make sure you get your BKB off. Not all together either. If that jump is with the clock and the Darkseer were smoking over, maybe that fight goes better for you, right? Maybe you let Tundra go into you a little bit. I think that was just a little too anxious, especially when Roshan is already dead. Uh, that jump is more about the team fight at that point than inhibiting that Roshan. That hurts. Because this is a fight where Tundra are going to clump. You are going to get the big vac here into a lot of that AoE damage. And it was such a good vac. There's a lot of damage getting pumped in here. Cookie on the Lizard finishes off Yuraki. Probably not happy about that one. Couldn't eat it with the cooldown on Devour. And then the burst on BZM. This is a bit concerning. That, that burst was really fast. That is one Rave King stun into your Zeus with Bloodstone deleted. I thought you could maybe live through that and get a leap off. It's not even close. So you are going to need four staffs here on this OG lineup, or at least some sort of utility to help Zeus survive in these fights. And they are building him. Four staff for Taiga. Four staff completed for DD DM here. And Glimmer being built for Chu. So three utility items going to be coming out here in the next few minutes to help the Zeus and the Doom kite out these fights. But now this is Tundra's moment to take over this game. They've swung that gold lead all the way back. This is where the auras become scary because Pipe is online for 33 and they have the big physical damage to push these objectives off of any one team fight. This is a very scary part of the game for if you're OG. And it's a large part of the game too. I think for the next 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes, these team fights become more terrifying because if you lose them, you're the one getting your base pushed, your tier twos pushed. Whereas if you win them, all you're getting out of it is more form on the map. Meteor setting up a good pick off here on Taiga. I think uh, what you're talking about, it's one of those situations, it's the, the classic, like, how many team fights do you need to win in a row to, like, be able to win the game, right? It's like Tundra, they win one team fight, they take objectives. OG have to win, like, a couple just to be able to start, you know, really getting onto Tundra's side of the map and, and taking any towers. Not the old 20 team fight lineups, do you have to win 20 team fights to win the game? Or do you have to win two? 
Dyer Both teams rather be playing the lineup where you just have to win the two. Who do you think that ratio is actually? Like Tundra winning a fight versus OG winning a fight. What's the equivalent? Zeus damage. Oh, hero yeah. damage. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what stat is this? Ricky is not doing a lot of damage in this game, but he does not have to. He needs just to set up the stun, the disable, find the Zeus. That's the best thing Nine can do. That's why he went eight to lens as well. He just wants extra range on the dart, on the jump. To find Zeus, find Doom off the start of the fight. Radio it's just going to seal the deal with the physical follow-up. And what were we saying? Ratio of what? Yeah, like team fights. My like build to yours? Yeah. Sure. Oh, team fights. I guess gonna be hit by another meteor. They hit him with another cookie, and he's dead again. Now the pickoff for Tundra just seems to be kind of overwhelming. Yeah, gonna try and go. Try to hit him with the blast off miss. The force tap got him away, and OG may. Be, I'm surprised Drew's out here. I'm not sure if he knows how many heroes in Tundra are here. I want Tundra in a rush. They're just gonna methodically play this map, take objectives, continue building up the auras. Pipe, drum, mech. You can't be done for Skeeter. It's all there. Oh, he went for it. They got the vacuum wall. Okay, so he's he about. Marches for it. Looking to go straight for BZM. Nine, he spotted him. Skeeter gets the follow up, and BZM's dead. Could not get off that ult for the heal. The cloud just too overwhelming. And now you are in retreat mode because Skeeter is coming for you. And he's lapping hard. 900 damage crit. Call 911. That was a 911 crit right there. <laughs> 12 to 18, a 3,000 net worth lead for Tundra, but it feels a lot more than that. I mean, it's just it's where their lineup strikes. Yeah. And you don't really have the firepower to deal with the auras right now, unless Zeus can stay alive during that entire fight. But Tundra have just been on top of him from the get-go. And it's hard to dodge the Ricky. Because you don't have the most natural vision tools in your lineup outside of the Zeus himself. So it's like the Zeus supposed to try and find the Ricky so the Ricky doesn't find him. That can be obnoxious sometimes, especially when there's hawks and a bunch of creeps and skeletons and boars and lizards. Also, was that initiation? Right for OG? What does Yuragi want to be jumping? Because uh, prioritizing the beast to try and take the ores out of the engagement. Is that correct? It's a question of who else do you jump? You can't see the Ricky and you can't doom the Raid King. That pretty much only leaves Beast here. Sure. Who isn't that great a target himself? Uh, his game's not easy. It's it's very Dyer's tough. Tower I think attack. dooming Ricky is the best you can get, but it's again, do you have the vision to see nine in these fights? Because he has extra cast range. He's just skirting around on the sides, playing off Hawk Vision himself. You kind of just need to throw the Zeus ult almost to see them and get the jump off a of smoke pop or something. That's probably the best way to take the fight. Because if you doom the Ricky, then it means he's not jumping your Zeus. That's the reason it's the biggest priority. Try to stay out this go. Turn it. Poor staff, but he can't get away from the impetus. Is once again the doom is going to be laid out on the Beastmaster. Yuragi realizes. Bad fight again. TP's out successfully, but OG will lose two. And in goes Tundra. Things are very difficult. You need a lot of things to align right now if you're OG. You need all your heroes alive. That's the biggest one, especially all your cores. Because you need a big back combo to win the fight. You need the aura from Darks here. You need Zeus to pump out the damage. And you Dyer's need Doom to... Oh, hey, Courier. Doom somebody. Oh, that's freebie. They got this nice bottom wave pushing in, so they'll take the tier one, probably take the last remaining tier two as well. Now, they do not have their Wraith King here. So they shouldn't rush to push this, and yeah, they'll back off. Let's see, it's chill, guys. Farm up after all. Roshan potential spawn time starts in 35 seconds. All right, I'll tell you how OG win this game, because I know you're doubting right now. I am a being a big old doubter. Agonim's Shiva's Doom. Back them all into the AOE Doom. Yeah, yeah. Cog them in. Mm hmm What do you do? What do you do if you're Tundra? Uh, right-click the Doom with Wraith King and kill him. 
Well, they have a halberd. What do you what do you do now? <laughs> okay. Well, that that sounds like one team fight win. How many more times do they have to do that on OG? Four or five. We've got a plan though. Okay. Trying to bait out the fight. Nice oh, wall okay. vacuum. No immediate follow up though. It's so hard to be able to get the follow up stuns when there's just these four Dying staffs always there. Is under attack. You also just don't have the best wall target. Getting the beast for the ores is pretty nice, but this Raid King illusion honestly does not hit too hard. No. That's the downside of this matchup. So the wall is not going to win you the fights like it would versus a Terror Blade or, or Morphling or something. Kind of have to win it off the, the Vax spell damage. Skeeter does not have any fear because he has Reincarn and he has DKB. Now they are getting a lot of damage on him for free here. Oh, life. He's gonna come back, beating the cogs. Oh, they get the blast off on that as well. They throw up the doom onto this Wraith King. Maybe this is the chance. Too good. A lot of heals, a lot of force staffs, allowing him to be able to disengage. Tundra might just have to leave Snake King behind, but not too bad. In fact, this kill is happening so slowly. Leave him behind. That it doesn't good. happen at all. Oh, behind. He didn't even kill this edge. That's what Zeus ult. That is best case scenario for OG. When you kill the Raid King for free and you can doom him on the second life, but the utility is just way too strong here from Tundra. Four stabs, heals, ores. Just disengage that fight. Let Snaking take the brunt. Doesn't even go down. Hey, you kind of need that Cog's pushback to be the other direction. Yeah, he just couldn't get the position. Yeah. How else can they keep Tundra in an area outside of your five-man vacuum? Hags darks here. Maybe that helps a little. Punch. Yeah, but like you said earlier, the illusion isn't that effective. All right, boss battle round two. The boss lives. Yeah, he's enjoying this game. He should be. His, uh, his team's doing Roshan while they're trying to kill him. Radiant's bottom tower. That is a shard going. The Skeeter. Okay. Get some skeletons. All right. Radiant's and bottom tower. Fast smoke off that as well. I mean, they have every ore in the game. I think. I don't know what's missing. I guess maybe Wraith Pack. Wraith Pack. Yeah. But. You're not buying Wraith Pack versus lineup. No, I'll tell you that much. this is probably <laughs> the worst lineup to buy Wraith Pack against. I think if Tundra bought Wraith Pack, they would help OG. <laughs> That's how bad <laughs> of a Wraith Pack game it is. Radiant. Plus, you already have the built-in Vlads and the help of the Overlord. Just cruising down the lanes here. This is your high ground window for Tundra. They gave Aegis to nine. This is something to note. So dooming that Ricky is not really an option anymore either, as he also has BKB. I don't know who you find here, Yoraki. I guess you just blink in, eat the big creep, and run away. That's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. I blink to power the gold. <laughs> run for my life. Hope they get baited in. Hope trying to defend their golem friend, you get a big back combo. The, the skeletons are going high ground right now. They are shredding your base. Oh my god. <laughs> Any defenders? That was a zero hero committal. They got a tier three. Oh boy. <laughs> the funny part is is that uh that aegis pickup for nine i was thinking about it if you really wanted to hit high ground badly wouldn't you get to skeeter you could you just have him solo hit it but he's just pretty much slotted oh man look at him go to town on your augie velvet tunic baby in there with the extra evasion try and walk it off Everybody trying to get out, but Yoragi's BKB is worn out, and the kisses, they're coming in! Surge does manage to get him away. Smoke Dark catches the clockwork while Nine goes for the kill on the other support. You chew. Bye bye, Chew. And hello, High Ground. Why not? So they just get all your fall online with the auras. Even just set the summons in. Try and burst 
sneaking, but not enough again. And the crit sends you back to base. Okay, buyback's force. Tundra's like, good enough for us. We're gonna reset a little bit, heal, and then they see an opportunity to go again. This team fight's just not thinking up for OG right now, and it's not easy. You're gonna have to have some hell of a high ground Zeus defense right here. Overextension from Tundra, that's what you're praying for. Almost smoked up. Skeeter sees his opportunity. He got the stun onto the Zeus. The rest of his team didn't follow him in, though. Shaq was actually pulled snaking into this one. They hit the blast off on the Wraith King and not much else, but immediately dies afterwards. <laughs> Just one shot him. Yeah. Techies player, so shedding a single tier right now. I'm telling you, man. Well, that's a five man wall. Yeah. Gator ran through it. He's backing himself. Lost his reincarnation. Has to get my time off. Tar stop. But again, it's hard for them to just follow that up. They just can't keep running at these heroes and then they get four staff heals, heals, heals. Uh, there's just no chase. Yeah. Both your supports are dead. They're a lot of your lockdown. In fact, they're pretty much all your lockdown. God, what you would give to have a disruptor instead of techies right now. What? Yeah, you'd probably give this game two of that bit right now. <laughs> Gotta be a club. There's no way around it. You have to bait a bump into a back and uh, your dark suit's dead. Well, there's no back, so... <laughs> Now, Tundra can maybe clump as much as they want. Clump around the Enchantress. With the heals and the locket, everybody wants a pin, a piece. Copy TM again. Knight's gonna follow it up. Here comes the hammer. Four staff gets him out of that one. Did manage to hit Taiga with it, though. The first life to the Skeeter. He's gonna die here. They're close to their fountain. Can they play around this? Of course, the BKB is always there for the Rain King. We start trying to lead into uh, the Doom. All right. And that evasion does help. You lot. baited him in. You gotta get something off this. More than skeletons. Getting the damn thing. It's making a high five at least. There you go. Yeah. It pays to be friends, you know? You got a high five out of that. What does the high five do for you though? A morale plus five. Magic killing. Yeah, but losing Dota game is like minus 500. So if you high five a hundred times. <laughs> Typical Zeus damage dealt. Twice as high as anybody else in the game, but still losing. They can keep dealing it. It's not doing much. There's the stain on Tundra's lineup now in the form of rocket snaking. He is happy to tank all your bolts. Happy to run into you. He has a full hurricane pike. Trying to play around this high ground ward. They just placed. They get the centaur stomp. Once again, they're going for this Beastmaster, but look at all these heals. They cannot output damage fast enough to get the kills. They're just all leading for it, and they've just stumbled into the Wraith King. So there goes that. Ah, wow, this game's toasted. Toasted and burnt to a crisp. One roar for the road. Ah, these drafts are so hard to execute, man. It's not possible, but you really have to play super hyper aggressive, and I don't feel like that's been OG's playstyles event either. I think they kind of relied on ZZM popping off on a carry that can scale into the mid late game, and having their sidelaners be something like pseudo space creators. Kind of, this type of lineup does function in that way, but you just don't have a way to combat the push, the auras, or the objective taking. And it means the second you slip up once, it may have punished. Yeah. I mean, that was a long time ago when they lost their first fight. Yeah, they were on 4 or 5k, but and, and then they lost every fight after that. I don't think they won a single engagement. Auras are still strong. That's the lesson of today.